7 News at 6.30, a health investigation on the Auraria and MSU Denver campuses after cancer concerns among faculty. I'm Eric Lufer on campus. Four employees diagnosed with three separate cases of cancer. What the school is doing to see if there's a link. Plus, a metro area pool is shut down for a nasty problem. The city of Brighton found fecal matter in the leisure pool here at the Brighton Oasis. But Brighton isn't the only public pool that's had this issue. The startling statistics that may gross you out a little bit coming up. This new video will have you talking this morning. A toddler takes a ride on a baggage conveyor belt at the airport. And when it comes to good pizza, Colorado, you're in good company. Whether you're coming in at a time of celebration or the need for comfort, we just want you to be at home. We take you to the small town shop that's packing in big crowds. It's going to be a touch cooler today, and there's a better chance for more scattered storms and showers this afternoon. Slight risk for a little severe weather, too. We'll take a closer look at today's storms coming up in just a few minutes. But first at 630, this is a live look right now from our Mile High camera over downtown Denver. Sun is just starting to come up. Storms are not moving in yet. We have beautiful blue skies as we wake up across the metro. Welcome back to Denver 7 News at 630. I'm Molly Hendrickson. And I'm Brian Sanders. Soak it in while you can. We are starting the day clear, but of course, storms will be back this afternoon. They might be even stronger today, too. Lisa is standing by in the Weather Center with the first alert for stronger storms this afternoon. Lisa. Yeah, you know, yesterday I saw maybe five, ten raindrops at my house. Today is going to be a little different. We're starting off with some beautiful conditions. You saw that sunshine this morning. We had a brief break from the, that intense sun glare, but now it's getting pretty bright. We're likely going to be in the mid to upper 80s by early afternoon, and that's going to be it for our highs today. So it's a little cooler today. Thunderstorms are going to develop. We're going to see one round by early afternoon, and then another one that looks like for the evening commute with our temperatures then dropping. Once those storms roll through, we can go from upper 80s to, well, 70s within just about 15 and 20 minutes when a storm rolls through. Here's a look at your highs. Ken Carroll, 87, Brighton, 88, and in Aurora, some mid-80s. The biggest risk today is not going to be the large hail or the damaging winds. It's going to be some of those flooding rains, and you can see we have a chance for storms and showers across the entire state. More on the timing of this, Jason, coming up in just a few minutes. And we could see some slower traffic, obviously, this afternoon with those storms here today. We do have a pretty decent ride for us up to the north side. However, it is really filling in, and some of the usual spots like I-25. You can see that from that camera up at I-25 near the Thornton Parkway. Some heavy stop and go traffic. The express lane's running a little bit better. And as before the drive times, you can see some of them pretty heavy. And so half an hour now on I-25 across Commerce City on 270, 15 minutes there. Also getting to that 20 minute range on I-70 and seeing a lot more traffic on 225 through that construction zone. No problems for us on C-470, which is welcome news. 6th Avenue and I-70 to the west side as well as 36. Nice and quiet. We can Continue to follow breaking news this morning. A public health investigation has been launched on the MSU Denver and Auraria campuses after four employees who work in the same office were recently diagnosed with cancer. We broke this story right at the top of the hour and also in a push alert that was sent to your phones right before 6 a.m. Denver 7's Eric Lufer is live on the campus this morning. And Eric, the area where these faculty members work has a history of asbestos. And that's what we're learning, but in a letter from campus officials to students, faculty, and parents, prior testing in this very building came back okay. But in that very same letter, it was revealed four employees have been diagnosed with three different cases of cancer, and all three work in the same office area here at the West Classroom. So out of an abundance of caution, campus officials are conducting even more testing in this building. According to the school newspaper, Met Media, the West Classroom was remodeled in 2010 and asbestos was revealed, but that's when the prior testing showed the building was safe to occupy. Met Media also reports that the PE building was closed in 2016 for asbestos issues. And just this past April, the locker rooms were closed due to asbestos. As for this latest case, I want to read an excerpt from that letter to the MSU Denver community. Quote, we appreciate the concerns of our university community and are moving quickly to address them and provide continued reassurance that the West Classroom building is safe to occupy. We have learned that additional testing is happening inside the West Classroom here. Those results are expected to be back by August 8th. There is a meeting for the public, especially the MSU uh, Denver community, at 11 o'clock this morning. That's going to be at the King Center Recital Hall on the northwest side 
of the campus. We'll be there for that to get some more answers. I'm Eric Lufer, Denver 7. More to come from this. Thank you, Eric. If your commute takes you through the North Metro, you could see some flames and smoke from the Suncor Energy Refinery. The refinery is conducting live fire training today. The refinery says live fire training was to start at 630 and continue into this afternoon. Suncor says the chemicals burn into the air are not harmful. Again, if you see smoke or flames, don't panic. It is training. These videos right here behind me are some of the people that we inducted into our Porch Pirate Hall of Shame. And thanks to your videos, we've been able to put these Porch Pirates on blast and their faces on TV. Well, now Fort Collins Police wants to do something similar. They launched what's called Patio Patrol. The police chief is asking people to register their home or business cameras to create a network and help build a safer community. Their database would map who has a camera, but they would not have access to the video without your permission. I think people want to help us. In fact, people are routinely contacting us after an incident, letting us know they have video. So all we're doing now is really just getting that information beforehand. Police say anyone with a security camera can join in. This is not the information we want to pass along to you early in the morning, but a city pool in Brighton is currently shut down because of fecal matter in the pool. We sent Micah Smith out to check out the situation, and Micah, it could take some time to disinfect and clear this all up. It could, Molly, and it sounds really gross, but the good news is that the cleanup is underway. And even though we're talking about the leisure pool here at the Brighton Oasis today, this happens quite often. According to the latest statistics from the Centers for Disease Control, each year, one in eight public pools, hot tubs, or water playgrounds has to be shut down due to health hazards or excessively dirty water. So again, this happens quite often. Now, when this happened here in Brighton, the city did send out an alert on its social media pages, Facebook and Twitter. On Facebook, the city shared a picture of one worker in a hazmat suit. As you can imagine, there's been a range of reactions, and even though it may feel natural to make light of the situation, the city is taking this seriously because of the possible exposure to chlorine resistant germs. So last night and today, staff members are working on cleaning the pool by following CDC guidelines. The city completed the first step by just simply shutting it down. The next step includes removing and disposing of the fecal matter. Then more chlorine, chlorine has to be put into the pool. Pool cleaners then confirm that the filtration system is working properly. And finally, once the disinfection process is complete, swimmers will be allowed back into the pool. Now the good news is the slides, the lazy river, those will be open today because we're learning that those operate on a different filtration system. And of course, we will keep following up with the city to find out when the leisure pool will open once again. Live in Brighton, Micah Smith, Denver 7. Thank you, Micah. As our Colorado grows, we've all seen rent and housing prices increase, but so have state lawmakers. So they're putting more money into affordable housing to the tune of $156 million over the next three years. Habitat for Humanity hopes some of that money will go towards home ownership. I like to say that in order to recruit individuals, you need to have affordable rentals. In order to retain and to retain um, our workforce, you need to have affordable home ownership. That's what keeps people grounded in the communities. So three state agencies are hosting meetings across the state this summer to determine how that money should be spent. This morning, investigators in Weld County are working to identify remains found near an oil and gas facility. Deputies say a bulldozer operator reported the bones about 10 miles southeast of LaSalle. Right now, the sheriff's department says it's treating this as a homicide investigation until evidence proves otherwise. The city of Westminster says an algae bloom that reduced oxygen levels in City Park Lake is the reason hundreds of fish turned up dead. So the officials noticed the fish kill last month. Because of this, the lake will no longer be stocked with fish, meaning no fishing will be allowed. This morning, we are following up on a 360 story you first saw on Denver 7 News at 10 o'clock last night. We explored what your rights are and if police can gain access to your cell phone. So this whole debate started after a Florida man was arrested for not using his blinker. During that traffic stop, the man got a text on his phone reading, oh my God, did they find it? 
Well, days later, police requested a search warrant and demanded his passcode. That man refused. He was thrown into jail for 44 days. So last night, you heard the perspective of that man's lawyer who says the judge who issued the search warrant was wrong. A civil rights lawyer who says this case is just the tip of the iceberg. A local prosecutor who says this would never happen in Colorado and a former police officer. We also heard from many of you on Facebook after our story aired. Sandy says, not that there's anything but mountains and kid pics on my phone, but I'd have to say no way. Steven is taking a hard stance. He says no warrant, no search with warrant, no help. We know there are several different opinions on this issue. If you'd like to share yours, send us an email to 360 at the Denver Channel .com. Well, before the storms roll in today, you might consider taking your family out to see the Broncos in action at training camp. Yes, it is day seven. Fans are welcome this morning at 915 until noon. If you haven't been out to see them yet, you will see some pretty cool things out of practice. Yesterday, Peyton Manning stopped by. That was probably the highlight of the day, having a catch out there. He was caught playing catch with uh, his twins, Marshall and Mosley. He's got a pretty good arm on him. <laughs> and take a look at this video. One reason to love the autograph sessions of camp. Will Parks even signed a baby after practice, or just the onesie. <laughs> the kid is going to love seeing this when he or she is older. Yeah, the baby's like, what's going on back there? <laughs> but already made a Broncos fan for life. Uh, so scorching temperatures sometimes, and then you'll have to dodge the rain at other times. Yeah, that'll be a little later. Now, Molly, did you just say that Peyton had a pretty good arm on him? No, his kid. Oh, okay, I was going to say he did. Yeah, he, he really does. He still does. Yes. Many years of it. So we've got Broncos training camp. Gates open at 8 o'clock this morning. Mostly sunny and mild. Those thunderstorms, I think, are going to be well after you leave Dove Valley. More so right around 2 or 3 o'clock is when things will get going. Upper 80s by noon, Jason. So it is still pretty toasty, just not as hot as yesterday. Not too bad getting over there right now on Arapahoe Road, getting over by uh, Peoria. Right now, it's a pretty nice drive. Also in the foothills, including uh, wide open conditions on 285 I-70 and Highway 74 coming down from Evergreen. Well, it might just be around 645 in the morning, but we are always ready for pizza any time of oh, the day, really. nothing wrong with breakfast pizza. Yeah. Good thing, Colorado, we are in good company this morning. We take you inside the small town pizza shop, drawing in big crowds. And this is the video everyone will be talking about today. A sneaky toddler gets away from mom.